we also have with us uh, uh, Shri Dilip Karambarkar, who is the uh, uh, who is the man, uh, chief editor of uh, Saptahik Vivek and all the other uh, Vivek publications. Along with that, we have the uh, he is also the president of SSASP, as we call it, that is uh, Sanskriti Samvardhan and Samshodhan Pratishthan. Along with that, along with us, we have uh, the executive president, Dr. Kala Acharya. Uh, who is the uh, pres uh, executive president of this institution. We have several dignitaries here with us. And uh, I'm also grateful to have with us our uh, uh, media partners. Uh, we have with us media partners, uh, Saptahik Vivek. We have News Bharti. Uh, we also have um, uh, uh, Sri uh, Aurobindo Society with us. Uh, yesterday, we had Sri Samp Dr. Sampadananda Mishra from the institution. And today uh, he is also with us. Uh, he is also streaming this entire thing live. So thank you to all the media partners. Along with that, we have Hindi Vivek, Tarun Bharat. So on behalf of um, everyone at Sanskriti Samvardhan and Samshodhan Pratishthan, I take this opportunity to welcome everyone. And let me, with no ado, introduce our speaker for today. Our speaker for today is Dr. Laura Yerekeshwa. She is the Professor Al Farabi Kazakh National University, President Kazakhstan India Foundation from Kazakhstan. And the areas of research where she works is sociology of religion, anthropology of religion, comparative religion, cultural studies, history of India, the Silk Route and other ancient trade routes, British travelers, travelers in Central Asia and South Asia, system theory, science and spirituality and international relations. As you can see, it's a broad spectrum. And to do justice to this broad spectrum, she has a lot of affiliations in this. Uh, she has several presentations in the form of uh, uh, publications, in the form of books and uh, journal uh, articles in the journal. So she has, uh, to her credit, books like Intercultural Dialogue and Intercultural Diversity. In addition, uh, yeah, she has uh, the affiliations of uh, religion and politics in South Asia, the Indian National Congress and Hindu Muslim problem in British India, and several others that are noteworthy. So I welcome on behalf of uh, everyone uh, present here, Dr. Laura Yerekeshava, and um, she's also been closely associated with Dr. Kala Acharya for several years, and that is another uh, bond that they share. So on behalf of uh, all of us, welcome, Dr. Laura, and uh, please go ahead with your beautiful topic from Gandhar to Sir India, Cross-Cultural Encounters and Images of the Other in Central Asian Collection of the National Museum of Asian Art. So over to you, Dr. Laura. Thank you very much. Namaskar to everyone. And first of all, I would like to thank again, yesterday we spoke about that today also, uh, sincere, sincere thanks to organizers to Sanskriti Sambadhan and Sanshotan Pratishthan and to Professor Kala Acharya particularly, with whom I have some special bonds. Uh, she was my teacher. And um, the, let me uh, start today with this topic which uh, uh, all has already been announced, like from Ganhara to Serindia. What are Ganhar and Serinde? What uh, historical cultural areas are these? Why we should pay attention? And uh, what, in general, uh, uh, relations and cross cultural encounters took place in this part of the world? And this, today, we shall try to see using the uh, artifacts from the beautiful collections which are preserved in the National Museum of Asian Art Museum Gimei in Paris. And we shall look at this cross-cultural dialogue through the prism of these uh, artifacts. So uh, let's speak today about culture, dialogue, and art. Uh, the contents of my presentation is, uh, as you see here, uh, relates to their uh, space. First, we shall discuss space and uh, uh, historical uh, areas, cultural historical areas of uh, mm, uh, of this uh, in general. Then uh, briefly, I will touch uh, upon the methodological stand to give a perspective on, on from which perspective we actually uh, should talk about that or 
we talk about that. So then I uh, also briefly, I will mention about this uh, collections of national, Central Asian collections of National Museum of Asian Art Museum in Paris. And then we come to, we shall come to the particular syncretism of Gandhara art and Serendia, how the representation of the other took place and that had been, will be followed by the brief conclusion. So let's start. Uh, let's start with the first topic of space and cultural historical areas. What are these areas and uh, why uh, we should uh, distinguish between it? So um, for me, it's, it looks like uh, very important that uh, the space, generally space of any region and particular of Central Asia, of course, was directly, that directly linked with the uh, time, participants and events. So without this uh, uh, triangle, we could not uh, identify the particular or even the same uh, space could uh, be known under the different names. For example, the territory, uh, as you see here from between uh, Sir Darya and Amur Darya rivers um, had very different connotations. Like for ancient Iranians, it was a space of Turan. For ancient Greeks, it was um, like uh, Transaxania or Transaxiana. For the Arabs, it was Mavaranahar. So later in period, uh, same, like a huge Eurasian space um, up to the Eastern Europe from the Far East, uh, for European travelers uh, uh, had also different connotations, uh, like Scythia, uh, where the tribes of Sarkas or Shakas or Scythes lived, Kamania or Tartaria. Uh, here in uh, Central Asia um, region, I would say that uh, it comprises of re really various cultural historical areas. And uh, the region is very uh, important because it gives us possibility or so-called case study to understand, uh, to, uh, understand the cross-cultural interaction, which was really, really important. Uh, for example, um, earlier I mentioned about different connotations, names of the area, but within the Central Asia area in itself, there you could distinguish different um, in other parts like Turan, Bactre, Margiana, Chorezm, or Khwarazm in different uh, pronunciations, Sogd, Fergana, Jetusu, Deshtikipchak, or the Great Steppe, Magulistan, Kashgari, Kashgar, or Uyghuria. Uh, what relation Gandhara and Serindia have uh, to this region? So uh, it could be said that they form a so-called peripheries of the huge region, region uh, as if they're framing, if we take the region as a, some frames, so Gandhara from the uh, southwest and Serindia from northeast part uh, were a sort of frames uh, which uh, makes uh, this region. And of course, as uh, for the other places, uh, these uh, areas, I mean, the Tower and Serenity also reflected very specific time, space and actors. So for your um, convenience, I took this map from the internet where you could just briefly and very roughly, this is not precise, to see the location of Ganhara. As you, hear, um, as, as you can see here, uh, this is a crossroads, a real crossroads of either geographical, either cultural uh, encounters. From geographical standpoint, it is a cross um, meeting point between um, huge mag magnificent mountains range, uh, like from um, Tenshan, Kunlun, uh, Pamir, uh, Western Himalayas mountain ranges. Uh, while from a cultural and historical point, this is a, a melting point, a meeting point between Indian, um, and Central Asian, and as we see later, Greek civilizations and Chinese civilizations as well. Uh, as for Syria, uh, there is a territory which comprises the modern Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region of China. And uh, this uh, map, which I, I have been taken from this digital archive of Toyobun Korea Books project in uh, Japan, is based on the uh, digitalization copy of the map, which had been drawn by Aurel Stein and uh, had been represented in his uh, five, um, fifth volume uh, work, Syria. So here you can see that uh, it occupies, the region occupies almost the uh, all uh, northern so-called Jungaria site or southern so-called um, uh, Hotan site of uh, Taklamakan, um, spacing also Taklamakan desert. Uh, and in ancient uh, sources, uh, this area also had been known as Altin Shahar. 
It means uh, the territory of six uh, towns or cities, which uh, were polis or cities oases, uh, which spread along the uh, this Taklama Khan desert. Uh, so, uh, uh, what about methodological stand? It uh, mm, works on uh, the premise which I use here um, on the types of the main results of cross-cultural interaction with the other. So let's say like, uh, as there are four main uh, systems, if we see from systemic approach based on Parsons, Talcott Parsons, then we could equally same distinguish the same uh, levels of intercultural encounters. Uh, like um, on the biological level, we could uh, correspond this to acquaintance and adaptation. When the person see the other for the first time, uh, he needs or she needs to adopt uh, oneself to the new environment and uh, people. On the individual level, uh, which re uh, re corresponds to the recognition, understanding and knowledge, it is here that when, when we try to understand and to know the other in more details, and on the third level, on social, uh, it is on this level when we uh, um, develop the types of acceptance and amalgamation, because on this particular social level, which is a relational category, we uh, socialize, we interact, and from this we come to more close relations uh, and uh, understanding of uh, and acceptance of the other. And on the highest uh, fourth cultural level, we see coexistence and up to syncretism. Uh, it is on this level uh, when the new cultural patterns uh, develop and uh, takes place. And on, uh, on this um, exactly cultural level system, uh, uh, the cultural patterns, uh, of course, they are syncretic and I call them as, as a multi-layered in nature. They differ in variety, a huge variety of symbolism and includes very uh, various traditions and practices. So uh, here on this cultural level, the perception of cultural or religious other uh, undergoes a huge transformation towards accept acceptance uh, as an equal member of solidary cultural groups. So today's lecture, we shall speak about this fourth level when the amalgamation uh, when the acceptance, when the acquaintance and knowledge uh, transforms into the coexistence and syncretism. So let's try to see this on the uh, sample of uh, the artifacts uh, which uh, depicts Gandhar and Serindia. But briefly before that, I would like to uh, pay your attention towards uh, National Museum of Asian Arts Museum in Paris, because this is a, one of the, uh, not because it is one of the richest and oldest and biggest uh, institutions or museums, but also it is a very huge depository and as a research center, which allows people uh, not only to see, but to study. Uh, here uh, you can see the picture of Emile Guimet. He was a, a French industrialist who took uh, uh, expeditions, uh, travel trips uh, to the East in uh, 1870s and inspired by whatever he had seen there and found, he became an admirer of Oriental, so-called Orient, and uh, started uh, accepting, oh, sorry, started um, acquainting uh, um, so many artifacts. So the, his collection grew up and in 1879, first in Lyon, and then uh, he transferred his collection into Paris. Uh, and he ordered also actually a special building uh, according to his vision, which is still could be found in Trocadero in this uh, area in, in Paris. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the museum's collection is really rich and it um, contains expeditions from famous expeditions of Paul Pelliot in 1906, 1909 to uh, Asia, particularly to China, Central Asia. Uh, the collections of French archaeological delegations to Afghanistan started at the end of 19th century and particularly in 1920s and 30s led by Joseph Hakan and the French expeditions to Afghanistan in 50s later. So you can imagine that particularly uh, when it comes to topic of to Gandhara and Serindia, this uh, institution is very important. Uh, here, uh, for example, we could see the photos of Paul Pelliot uh, in a very famous Dunhuan cave in 1908, one year Later, after uh, um, Oriel Stein opened, discovered this uh, caves of the thousand Buddhas in 1907 in May, 
so you could see the huge interest of uh, Europeans uh, towards uh, Asian country and history and understanding of their rich culture. The, here you could see this unique photo of Paul Pelio himself, a huge depository of manuscripts and uh, written in Hatanese, uh, Sanskrit, in uh, Brahmi, in Kharoshthi, in Mongolian, Tibetan, and in Chinese languages, which are still under uh, um, uh, researching. So it, it has been not fully researched and International Dunhuang project, it helps uh, to at least to um, progress in this. Uh, now let's come uh, to the uh, direct uh, syncretic art of Gandhara. Uh, here we could see that, uh, as I told earlier, it is a melting and meeting point between, uh, first of all, Indian, Hellenistic, and Central Asian itself, civilizations, traditions, particularly Bactrian Parthen, and uh, the whole plots and inclusions of ancient Indian, Buddhist, and Greek mythologies uh, were um, intertwined and incorporated in one so-called port. And that has been type, uh, um, typologized uh, through the depictions of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas from stories of uh, Jatakas, stories of Buddha, depictions of local gods of fertility, such as Panchika Kuberi, Hariti, Faro Ardokshu, Central Asian or Bactrian, uh, sculptures of, of course, Yakshanis, Gandharvas, Devatas, stories about uh, from Greek mythologists like Dionysus and Hercules and uh, depictions of Atlantans. So even uh, um, representing and uh, looking at this list, you could see enormous, enormous uh, intermixture of different traditions, uh, which even uh, you could not expect, for example, from far east to far west. And here, particularly as the mountain regions meet in uh, this place of Ganhara, uh, it's equally same, the cultural traditions also interfluence with each other. Uh, here also you could see beautiful heads of uh, Bodhisattvas, uh, which uh, um, are also in the collection of this museum. Uh, like uh, Bodhisattva of Maitreya in, on the left and uh, Bodhisattva from Ganhara, all of them attributed to the first, third century a, a of common era. era. Uh, and here you could see that Bodhisattvas, if you uh, look, for example, to the Indian or Chinese tradition, uh, are represented absolutely in a different forms with a more humble, with a more soft and more with strength at the same type uh, with the most soft contours. Here the Bodhisattvas, especially on the right hand, right hand um, side, uh, are in a very masculine form. Uh, they are warriors, they are real kshatriyas, they are warriors which are defendants of the faith. And uh, But iconography of them suggests you that there is huge um, incorporation of uh, Indian uh, cultural traditions elements like um, on this um, uh, spot and bind on the forehead, uh, like uh, uh, also um, huge uh, jewelry, massive, which uh, could be seen on the right. At the same side and center, you could see very generous mustache and also the uh, attitude of masculinity and uh, defendants warriors. Uh, here also you could see the beautiful standing, but he suffer from Shahbaz Garhi. Uh, which is a real bright example of syncretism. Um, and it, uh, its clothes and its symbolism of attire is a manifestation of various traditions which are organically interwoven together. Uh, the, uh, if you come more closer to that depiction, you could see this is Indian robe uh, with a flaping cape over the left shoulder with the Brahmanic cords, uh, uh, with a depiction of uh, Garuda bird on the top of turban, and at the same time, you could see this depiction was maybe not perfectly now, on this, but in a, um, from uh, in original, you could see the depiction of cupids. Cupids is also a symbol which came from a Greek art and then transferred into the European up to Renaissance period. And also in this uh, gesture, it's sort of like Abhaya Mudras, which uh, uh, looks even differently. This is a high mudras of uh, not quite uh, strength. This is a more 
open and a more straightforward and defending position as a defender of the faith, uh, it's the master depicted these uh, attributes according to the local standards and style. And these standards and style incorporated, as I told you earlier, in both in, in Indian and uh, particular Buddhist tradition, because and, uh, Gandhara was a part of um, uh, Kushan Empire, which by itself was a mixture of different uh, traditions from UH tribes coming from the north, from Indian and local uh, traditions as well. So here we have, uh, you could also see within this characteristic folds of the clothing depicted at the, at, on the one time of Indian tradition, yet at the same time the uh, folds uh, like from Greek art and also the halo around the head. Uh, next, I would like to talk about the, another form of representation of the syncretism as uh, the ancient Greek gods, heroes, Hercules and Aeschylus, as well as Dionysius, uh, which became also very much part of the local uh, tradition, which absorbed Greek uh, myths and legends, and these uh, heroes became very popular. And the myth, the myth about them lives not only in India, Central Asia, and even reaching as far as China. Uh, for example, here I used the citation from the very famous German scholar Schwanbeck, who was a uh, translator and co collected the Indica of Megathens of 3rd century uh, BC, before Common Era, and, and whom also cited uh, another uh, translator of Indica by, by Arian, by Macrindel. So uh, here in this uh, uh, in this citation, you could see uh, that for Greeks, when Macedonians came to uh, India, and then uh, they after the consequent dis uh, dissolution of Macedonian um, uh, Alexander the Great Empire, and when uh, Magadha from India uh, and uh, Maurya Empire became, and uh, Greeks became the neighbors. So uh, from this part, uh, from that sorry, uh, time, you could see that Shiva, Macedonians on the Greek identified uh, Shiva with the Bacchus uh, because uh, they saw a sort of uh, Bacchic fashion of his worship and because they traced some light resemblance between the attributes of the two deities. Uh, on equally strong grounds, they identified Krishna, another god with, uh, whom they saw worshiped was Her Heracles or Hercules. And whenever they see among the tribes of Sibaya, they saw the skins of wild beasts or clubs or the like, they assumed that, for example, perhaps Hercules had at some time or another dwelt here. So uh, to this time, uh, I'd heard the legends about the miracles and uh, the labors of Hercules after 12 labors he has done in uh, Greek, Greece, sorry, then in, he also traveled to India and left, uh, lived there for at some period. And even uh, it, to some point, they mentioned Swambik that, um, and Macrindel that uh, they set an empire of full Indian civilization. But that is, of course, uh, like an exaggeration of whatever they strive to see familiar symbols and meaning in the other. Uh, here, for example, you could see the image of Heracles uh, in its classical uh, European uh, depiction. Uh, when uh, this is a um, half an egg body of Hercules with the lion skin, which uh, on the, his head uh, on the back and with his club or uh, button, which he used. But in uh, Ganhara tradition, the depiction of Hercules transformed. He became uh, transformed into Vajrapani. Vajrapani, who was invisible, uh, a companion to Buddha, uh, became very much visible first, and to local masters who try to accumulate both Greek and Indian uh, symbolism, uh, he acquired a new symbol. Uh, instead of his club, he started, um, uh, there is started uh, uh, using uh, the Vajra. So Vajra became as a uh, very iconographic in Buddhist iconography uh, and very much characteristic of uh, this tradition became uh, represented in uh, this syncretic art. And Buddha himself was also with moustache, uh, Abhaya Mudra also was a more straightforward and the depiction of his eyes and attitudes, the direction all speaks about more real, uh, not only spiritual, also a physical defender and warrior of the faith. Uh, 
Uh, here in another legends about Hercules in Ganharaj, you could see a story from Jatakas when uh, the uh, Buddha met uh, and Vajrapani met the Mawa, or haymaker, who offered the Buddha uh, the freshly cut grass. So he also, uh, Vajrapani, image of Vajrapani is much more closer to the canonical pose of Hercules in the Greek art with his lion skin on the, over his, his head, with uh, he lives on the one leg and still yet he keeps Vajra and not uh, club and um, button in his hand. Vajra is very prominent. Buddha also himself here uh, is like uh, one of the defendants of the faith uh, with a huge mustache, with very open straightforward eyes and so on. So here you could see uh, the transformation of depiction of those deities and gods um, uh, as per the local style. And the local style was based on the cultural, uh, cross-cultural encounters. Uh, like if we go to the European art, you could see this Hercules, as he on the picture from the uh, palace near München in Bavaria in Germany, Hercules is uh, intermixed his images with the images of Atlantis. Uh, Atlantis uh, also occupied a very important role. Uh, while in Ganhara art, for example, you see the depiction of relief from uh, Shari Bahlol, uh, which is now in Peshawar Museum. Um, the Atlantis are keeping the sky, keeping the burden only not through two with one hand and seemingly effortless and without applying any efforts, and they're not standing, they're sitting, and they're sitting as per the traditional, as per local, um, and as per Indian tradition. So here you could also see the variations of the depiction of the Atlantis in Gandhara art. Uh, now let me uh, come also to another part, cultural historical era of uh, Central Asia, as Serindia, and let us see how the interaction and the image of the other had been represented here, um, there, in this part. So uh, what, what Serinda is? According to Stein, uh, he uh, writes that uh, there is a dra uh, drainageless belt between the Pamiris in the west and the Pacific watershed in the east, which for more than a thousand years formed a special meeting ground of Chinese civilization, introduced by trade and political penetration and of Indian civilization, uh, culture propagated by Buddhism. Uh, so Stein himself adopted this term for, uh, like Serind from the French uh, fellow scholars. And he think that this term is suited for the de designation of this uh, region as well defined by nature, as well as by this historical relationship. Uh, to add to this uh, citation of uh, Stein, I would add that while Gadhara, when, uh, while Gadhara is the main interaction between ancient Indian, Indian and Greek civilizations and Serinde between ancient Indian and Chinese civilization, civilization also the local uh, or civilization or cultures of Central Asia also influenced uh, on this uh, output, on this uh, production uh, intercultural mix, which became famous in these parts of the region. Because uh, uh, to my point, uh, Central Asian civilization as a basic one, which processed the incoming new meanings, which included both uh, Indian, both Chinese, uh, both uh, Greek through Gandhara art and uh, carrying out so-called cultural simulation and uh, adaptation to new cultural meanings, uh, breeding, uh, bringing them to a common denominator and further broadcasting and consolidating them all as a normative and basic one. Uh, so uh, based on that, uh, Indian culture influenced Serinda both directly through the symbolism of uh, Hinduism and ideology of Buddhism, and indirectly also through the syncretic culture of Gandhara. And as a result, we could see that in Serindia, even to a greater extent than in Gandhara, there, is a, there was a more diverse cross-cultural interactions in terms of the number of components, of elements, of traditions, the degree of influence. So taking into account the fact of direct proximity to the Chinese civilization as well, 
you could imagine the scale of this interaction. So uh, how Gandhara art influenced Serinda? It influenced through in the middle of especially first millennium of common era, uh, like an echo from the Gandhara art from the first third century, still continue to influence Serinda. And that could be uh, seen uh, by already by six, uh, eight, uh, seven century common era, or using the, uh, sorry, seeing the images, beautiful images of bodhisattvas of different types with diadem, with laurel wreath on their heads, which had been found in such places as Tumshuk, Tokusarai, during the famous expedition of Old Pelio in early 19th, 20th century. For example, here you could see the heads of bodhisattvas or perhaps dev devatas uh, with the laurel uh, wreath uh, from Duldurakur in the state of Kucha on the upper part in Xinjiang, which uh, these bodhisattvas still bear a stamp or echo of masculinity and the spirit of the defendants of the faith uh, from Gandhara, though already in a so-called blurred uh, form, in a more uh, transformative form, like here, uh, but he started from Kulkucha, Duldurakur uh, in Xinjiang. But by the be beginning of the seventh century, you could see the further transformation. Like here, but he started from Tumshuk or Tokus Sarai are no longer warriors or some kind of defenders of faith of uh, Tumshuk or, or sort of from Hada or other places. Uh, as you can see from this picture, they're extremely lyrical and the facial expression are conveyed in very soft and flowing manner and to such extent that even the materials which these heads have been made of terracotta uh, and not from stone. He also is too, uh, this, um, in, but if in Gandhara you could see uh, the bright beginning, open, straightforward, instrumentally emphasized in stone. And in Serindia, Buddhism seems to flourish with a new soft pastel colors. The statues and heads are made using, as I mentioned, terracotta materials or earth materials. As such, Bodhisattvas uh, from the same place, Tumshuk and Takusarai, also found by expedition of Paul Pelio. Here you could see more Indianized elements of uh, decor, of turban, of um, depictions of the head with a more profound uh, expression of the long uh, type of ears, which could not see in Gandhara, but which, very, which is very much part of the iconic representation in Buddhist particular iconography in India. Uh, here also you could see a fragment of a mural depicting a sermon of the Buddha in a mural from Duldurakul, also in Kucha, in Xinjiang, uh, where you could see more Indianized form as well, uh, whether it comes to the depiction of the faces, of the profile, nose, eyes, which um, the lips and uh, the attire. Uh, with, uh, here you could see the images of the other when the influence and var of various cultures uh, is uh, very well traced in the materials of burial grave practice in Japan and Poland, that is 7th century common era. I see somewhere a uh, sound. If you can please switch on. So, um, in this uh, picture, for example, mm -hmm. the image of a uh, woman. The image of the sitting woman on the left, and the image of the soldier on the right, which has been found in northern China. They made of terracotta. And what is interesting in uh, the image of the woman, which is uh, her head is covered by the special head cover. It resembles very much the nomadic tribes and uh, sometimes in, in Kazakhstan also you could find uh, in rural areas uh, this uh, head cover, which is called Kemishik, very much tradition. So it means uh, in China, they absorbed also from nomadic tradition as well, 
or the uh, this depiction of the no in uh, of sorry Sogdian, the famous trading community uh, from Bactria Parfe, which made fortunes on trading with China uh, while organizing the caravans uh, of um, goods. So we could see the, this image as represented in the uh, from the Ch Chinese perspective. Uh, here, for example, you could see also the another uh, sample of cross-cultural borrowing, like a polo plane, which became also very popular during the time period because the time period was uh, um, so-called uh, um, um, high period uh, climax of intercultural uh, relations because of flourishing of the trade uh, Silk Road. So this you could see there is some girls playing on the polo for whom this uh, uh, perhaps uh, game was very popular. And also, as here on the, uh, this fragment, you could see the representative from nomadic tribe with a particular, uh, perhaps, Turkic Mongolian tribes who uh, was showing uh, how to play the polo uh, leading the game. Uh, the other beautiful parts of the images of the other uh, are the um, uh, artifacts of camel drivers. Uh, which uh, made also from terracotta. And here you could see the camel drab with all stuff around him, with all uh, wine skins, with all provence, uh, with uh, uh, jars, uh, with uh, uh, pots, and whatever. And beautifully made the hair or uh, fur of the camel. Here you could see another uh, sample of this uh, representation of the other the Sogdans, which perhaps were so tired during the long caravan marches and routes from one place, caravan sarai, to another, that they entertained themselves. And the master depicted this is in a very brilliant and picturesque and a very uh, uh, livelihood way when some Sogdans were even not only playing or singing, but seems like dancing and uh, not dancing, but articulating while singing. Um, and singing on these instruments. Uh, so, and uh, another uh, beautiful image of the other is the um, panel laid, which usually made during, uh, on, a, um, on a funeral slab, which depicted the scenes of the Sogdians. As I told you, Sogdian community was very rich and uh, uh, they were very uh, um, so-called uh, respected as well, because uh, with them came also the uh, economical uh, flourishing of the empire. And so uh, when uh, the Sogdians, this or that, uh, had been buried uh, and died and buried uh, out far away from his uh, native land um, in China, uh, he ordered uh, the so-called funeral slab. And particularly on this part of funeral slab, uh, you could see the depiction, uh, the celebration, sorry, by the Sogdians of the uh, Fainos uh, New Year or Navruz or Nowruz, uh, which is very important festival for Turkic and Iranian peoples. And here you could see how the uh, deep flourishing, how the floral depiction and joy and also the, maybe perhaps not very clear here, but also the attires and clothes of the Sogdian procession, once uh, very um, high ra uh, ranked Sogdians under the um, umbrella going on the horse and the honor procession is accompanying him. So these are also the element of these cross-cultural encounters, which are still very much could be represented. And thanks for it, the humankind uh, is able to uh, uh, trace and found them. And this also is placed in the National Museum of Asian Art. So uh, coming to conclusion, uh, what I would like to say, first of all, that the cultural and uh, historical areas of Central Asia, such as Ganhar and Serinda, uh, became very uh, important and extremely rich manifestation of cross-cultural encounters. And uh, they show that these encounters took place on the very high level, uh, from cultural on cultural level, when, from cultural adaptation, coexistence, and uh, on the level of syncretism. Uh, and also uh, the development of societies and social groups is impossible with this interaction, uh, whether we would like to acknowledge this or not, or maybe in different stage, in different degree. So it gives us a very important lesson that while learning other, you, the person learns oneself in a very much and better way. So, and 
this gives us uh, scholars, researchers, uh, gives us a very good opportunity to see how these encounters took place in the history and it gives us a, so impetus to uh, do this cooperate uh, nowadays. Here I use quickly bibliography, maybe uh, for you could be interested and uh, would like to thank you uh, for your attention and uh, thank you again for um, Sanskrit uh, Sambarhan uh, and Sanshotham Pratishthan for organizing the series of Sanskrit at 12 months long interactions. And hopefully, we could, uh, this could be an emblem and a form of interactions uh, for the future. So, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bye. Laura. Thank you. Uh, it is indeed uh, very, very interesting to know. Uh, this cross-cultural uh, diversity and the way you've presented it in a very lucid manner so that uh, it's easy for uh, commoners who are not really initiated in this field also to understand. So that was really nice. Uh, is, uh, if, if there are a few questions, we could uh, take a few questions for the from the participants before uh, uh, we request uh, Dr. Kala Acharya ji to uh, speak. So if uh, before that, if there are any questions from the audience present here, uh, maybe we could take a question or two. You can post the question on chat so that it is convenient in case there are any voice disturbances at the end. You may uh, post your questions in chat, if at all. OK, there is appreciation, uh, Laura. There is appreciation for, your persp uh, for the perspective and interest that is there in this topic. And uh, one of the participants has mentioned that as well. So um, I think it's... And also, I, I just wanted, I forgot to tell from the beginning that uh, my presentation here is based on the article which I uh, submitted for uh, forthcoming books, which is called Canvas of Cultures, uh, which is uh, actually the uh, edited volume following the uh, conference which we uh, had in November 2018 in Almaty sponsored by the Indian Embassy in Kazakhstan, Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center. And um, this is, is going to uh, be published. Hmm. So if it once it is, uh, it will be posted online or in a PDF for, format. Yeah. Thank you, that was nice. Uh, we mm -hmm. could request Dr. Kala Acharya ji to uh, speak a few words uh, and uh, maybe give her concluding remarks or as she wishes. Unmute, ma'am, please unmute. Ma'am, please unmute. Ma'am, please unmute. Yes. Now is this okay? Yes, yes. You're all huh. I sincerely thank you, Dr. Laura Erekesheva, for giving us knowledge, not only knowledge, but making us understand that cultures do not collide. Communities may fight, nations may fight, but what is what art teaches us is give and take, making each other richer than it earlier was. As you said, uh, that there are different, there are dis always the distinct features of a uh, of a uh, art manifested through the tradition of a of a particular culture or religion. But what happens that as you said, that then not only just first uh, first come into contact with each other, but they adopt and they take. They, there is a give and take between them, and then there is an amalgamation. And this teaches us a lot, because as we have seen that Gandhara art is inseparable from Lord Buddha or Bodhisattva, uh, and his mudras, gestures. They are adopted by the culture, by other cultures. And what is important here is that we can also know through these gestures how the focus of religion is changing. For example, if that gesture, which includes the gaze of Lord Buddha, either the eyes are, whether the eyes are open or they are half open, or they are directed towards, they, they are directed below. So that gaze, if it is directed below, 
it means that it it has compassion for human beings so from the religion in uh, earlier not in buddhism so much importance was given to god at all but the focus how it changes that human being becomes the central thing of religion and then to uplift that human being from the cycle of birth and death as you had mentioned it uh, from some other culture is important that becomes important so karuna compassion is more important or even the position of the leg or of hands if uh, about hands we always find that abhaya mudra has become more popular in all all uh, manifestations of art because abhaya is giving protection protection to each and everybody so what we can learn from art is that everybody has to be taken care of we can we can have enri- we can enrich each other through art because word is important manuscripts you mentioned they are important and especially of brahmi and kharoshri uh, manuscripts they they need to be studied in depth but as much as these manuscripts which describe all all the distinct features of culture as much as they are important art is important because knowledge is more manifested through art mm-hmm. because everyone loves art and there is no hatred for in the field of art that's why your speech has given us a new realization a new vision uh, about how to look towards art and it was full of information which has also given us a lot of knowledge so thank you very much thank you very much for coming and we will be happy if there is some study in manuscripts thank you thank professor you. professor from Kaun, the bottom of my heart to to hear this from you it's like a really great honor it's a honor and thank you um absolutely right when we study manuscripts we see like from one dimension while we uh, see the art then we could see this like from 3d perspective because art why art was made because art was made to make some um, uh, answers for the local uh, from from the local from the local people at some particular time to understand to fill in the request request for heaven something and uh, while this request has been done by different masters with other unfortunately unknown uh, yet uh, these masters uh, reflected the existing situation around them so the art is a very much uh, digital so called manifestation and digital impression of uh, that um, dialogue and uh, also would like to uh, no, no, uh tell you about um sorry to answer maybe some comments on your note notice of uh the gestures and positions this is really important perhaps i didn't much focus on that in my presentation but yes when the gaze of the buddha even with the same abhaya mudra uh, uh posture uh, when the gaze is looking down and in some cultures almost closing eyes here you could see the open eyes which are accepting the world to defend like in the warrior in a physical uh, defendants as well not on the spiritual so in plus of spirit and this also reflected the existing traditions and art gives us though in manuscripts we could not see this uh, or, perhaps for also it was also obvious but uh, for us uh, so many centuries living after uh, we could not sometimes find this Thank you so much for very uh, really um, useful and rich commentaries on that. Uh, uh, Dr. Sanjay Pandey would uh, uh, wish to ask a question. So may I request Pandey ji to please say uh, you can word your question, please. Uh, hello, L- Dr. Laura. Hello. Uh, th- thank you for this very illuminating, very vivid, uh, and interesting presentation. Uh, 
I just want, I wondered, you talked about this meeting of cultures, the commonalities between uh, Central Asian, South Asian, and uh, Cynic uh, architecture and culture. I was wondering whether uh, some of these uh, similarities extended to uh, the Mathura art, uh, because uh, Mathura art, uh, Gandhara uh, is a, a geographical area which is part of uh, South Asian subcontinent, but uh, not part of present day India. Uh, Mathura is something which is uh, closer to the subsequent uh, cultural and architectural and uh, sculptural tradition of India. So uh, the similarities that you see in Gandhara, uh, some of these similarities, are they there in the Mathura art also, which followed Gandhara and which was deeply influenced by Mathura, uh, sorry, Gandhara. Mathura was deeply influenced by Gandhara. So these uh, influences of Central Asia and uh, Cynic, uh, Chinese, Xinjiang, uh, can we also see in uh, Mathura art? in case uh, you have done some uh, study on this. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Professor Sanjay. Uh, so nice to hear you. Uh, I would like to say, so Professor Sanjay is a leading uh, specialist on Central Asia from GNU University. Uh, and um, as for Mathura art and uh, Gandhara art, they're, they're similar. Uh, and actually, I would like to tell that uh, Starting with uh, Madhura, oh, sorry, Gandhara, then Madhura art, the depiction of Buddha became Buddha became uh, symbolized in the uh, visible form, because yes. earlier, because earlier Buddha was uh, depicted as symbols, whether it comes to his uh, foot, uh, so his um, some other parts, but in the Gandhara and also we perhaps should acknowledge the Dolka or Greek tradition, the uh, idea or symbolism of the hero. Uh, became um, became amalgamated with this idea of Buddhism because Buddhism was official uh, state religion in uh, during Kushan Empire, and also uh, um, uh, Buddha became visualized in uh, materially, so people could follow and worship Buddha as a real or some person abstract though, but uh, real which they could uh, see and touch the statue. As for uh, similarity between Mathura and uh, Mathura or Mat 